Hello and welcome to TTG's webinar with Destination Canada. I'm Maddie Barber, the Special Projects Editor at TTG Media, and I'm joined today by Adam Hanmer, who is the Trade Manager at Destination Canada. Thanks very much for joining me today, Adam. Hey Maddie, it's good to be here. It's great to have you. So during this webinar, we're going to be covering everything you need to know about Canada and how to sell it, including um, current travel to the destination and how to get around once your clients are there. We're going to cover the destination's top selling point for 2022, the best Canadian experiences, depending on which season your client is visiting in. We're also going to touch on active outdoor adventures and Indigenous tourism. And then towards the end of the webinar, we'll cover marketing advice, sales tips and agent support that Destination Canada is currently offering you. So to set the scene a little bit, I know that Canada's border is now open to Brits, which is fantastic news. Are there any requirements for arrivals to gain entry? Yeah, no, we're delighted that we opened on the 7th of September. Yeah, so the main requirement is that you're double jabbed uh, and then you have to do a negative PCR within 72 hours of, of, of going. So they've got a very good app that you load up all your information on. Um, and yeah, and, and then you're, you're good to go. There is a slight challenge for families at the moment with children between 12 and 17 because they have to be double jabbed, um, the kids, and we're only doing one jab here. So we're hoping things might change on that. So that, that is currently a challenge, but certainly for, for adults and with younger children um, below 12, then they're, they're, they're good to go. Okay, great. And what is the current air capacity into Canada? Are you able to briefly run us through the route? Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, I think the thing to get across with Canada is people don't realise it, it. It is a bit nearer than you think. I mean, the flying times is, is anywhere between five and ten hours. So, you know, particularly the East Coast, we really consider it as, as mid-haul. You know, Toronto's a seven and a half hour flight. You know, St. John's is four and a half hours, Halifax six hours. So it is worth remembering that for, for clients that don't want that long you know, the, the longer long haul flight. So Air Canada is obviously our flagship carrier and they fly out of mainly out of Heathrow. So they've got flights um, daily to Halifax. They've got four flights daily to Toronto, twi twice a day to Montreal, daily to Calgary and twice a day to Vancouver. So really good coverage there. They also fly in Manchester, Toronto daily and, and Edinburgh, Toronto daily. And that's from June to October. And then we've got WestJet flying out of Gatwick. So they've got flights to Calgary, which is their hub. Uh, daily flights and daily flights to Toronto, Vancouver and Halifax. That's all out of Gatwick. But then they've also got a Glasgow Halifax offering, a Glasgow to Toronto offering and an Edinburgh to Toronto offering. So some good options for, for the Scottish clients there. And then Air Transit have got these great new planes, these Neos, um, and they're flying Gatwick, Toronto, Gatwick, Montreal, and Manchester to Toronto, um, and Glasgow, Toronto, and Montreal. So, and, and then you can connect to the West Coast through Toronto with them. And then we've got obviously good old British Airways. They fly um, from to Montreal, Toronto and Vancouver. Again, that's that's out of Heathrow. So plenty of options there. Yeah, loads of options, that's great. Now I know Canada is obviously a giant country um, and visitors might want to explore more than one destination there during their trip. And um, what are the best ways to get around once they're in Canada? Yeah, well, I mean, I always push people to, to do self-drive. I mean, I think, you know, it is the best way to, to see Canada. It's definitely, we've seen a lot more growth in, in self-drive in the last sort of five, seven years. Um, you know, the roads are easy, it's easy driving, the roads are quieter than the UK. So I totally recommend that. The other option, if you're, if you're um, keen on driving, is, is to take an RV, to rent an RV, um, which is, is uh, recreation vehicle which is a, we know is a kind of camper van or a motorhome um, that's a really good option as well you know particularly if people post-covid are a little bit worried about um, you know wanting to kind of limit their contacts with people you know certainly you're very self-contained in, in an rv but then if people don't want to drive you know we've got a great rail network um, it's there's a lot of history with with the trains in canada it's you know it was what joined up the country initially so we've got via rail um, which is, is a great option. And then obviously we've got our sort of signature experiences like Rocky Mountaineer. And then for those, again, that don't want to drive, um, we've got a great seat and coach touring offer, offering, you know, with the likes of Insight, APT, Titan and Saga. So yeah, th there's plenty of options. So yeah, we've just got a little video for you now on road tripping in Canada.
Great. Thanks so much for that, Adam. Um, my next question is, what would you say is Canada's top selling point for 2022 if, if most clients are booking for next year? Well, I don't know. We feel like more so than ever, you know, it's people will want fresh air and space. You know, Canada's the second largest country in the world. So, um, you know, you can fit the UK into Canada 40 times. So you've got plenty of room to, to spread out and relax. Um, you know, we've got something like 20% of the world's fresh water in Canadian natural lakes. So, you know, we've got this easy, accessible, great outdoors, which is only within one to two hours of, of most of the major cities. Um, so, you know, we've got our Canada's sort of parts. Canada is uh, got 48 national parks and, you know, probably one of the famous ones you would have, might have heard of is, is Banff, which is sitting behind me actually, uh, uh, is, is one of the oldest national parks in the world. So, you know, we, we feel like that's really what clients are going to want is getting out in the, in the great outdoors. And, you know, obviously Canadians are, are wonderful, be friendly and, and really good hospitable people so that, you know, they're really waiting to, to, to give your clients a, a genuine and warm welcome. Great. OK. And, and what would you say are kind of bucket list experiences for those that are looking to check off, you know, the big hitters? Yeah, well, we, you know, we, we've got we've got quite a lot, actually. Um, and it's very much a sort of four season bucket list destination. But, you know, some of the big ones, you know, the wildlife, um, particularly, you know, the bears is, is a real draw card. Um, you know, we've got the brown, the black bears and the grizzly bears. Um, and then also we've got, you know, the polar bears as well up in the north. You know, Manitoba is the best place to see that. And then we've got the whales as well on the east and the west coast. So, you know, that includes the orca, even the narwhal. Um, and then, you know, people don't think of Canada for like northern lights. So, you know, we've got some of the best northern light viewing experiences in the world. You know, somewhere like the Yukon, which is only a two hour flight. You know, White Horse is only a two hour flight from Vancouver. You know, suggest that to your clients for an added on uh, stopover at the end of their trip to go and you know see the northern lights that the season there runs from sort of late august right through to march we've got dark, dark sky reserves as well great sort of star spotting we've got icebergs on the east coast um and then yeah we've got these iconic train journeys and natural wonders such as niagara falls and the rockies uh, and then we've got some you know world-class festivals like calgary stampede which is one of the biggest rodeos in the world so I've got a little video now, I'm going to show you on legendary experiences. Okay, thank you. Now, I know that you said there that Canada is a four season destination, um, but what are some of the highlights that visitors can experience in those different seasons that may be specific to, um, you know, winter, summer, autumn and spring? Yeah, well, I, I mean, I've just picked out a few. I mean, spring is, um, it tends to be quite short in Canada and depending, depending where you are, but you know, you've got, you know, over on the West Coast, like Vancouver, you've got this wonderful cherry blossom festival, which takes place um, in sort of March, April. Um, is, 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 is a beautiful time to be in the city. Um, I talked before bit about the icebergs, you know, you get Iceberg Alley on Newfoundland and Labrador, the icebergs are coming down and you can go and go, you know, go out in a kayak and spot them. They do iceberg beer and, and vodka and, and, you know, it, 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 you get the start of the whale watching season as well, um, which is fantastic. And then, yeah, I mean, the bears are just coming out of hibernation as well. So there's a chance to see bears. I mean, summer's the most time your clients will go to Canada. I think one of the myths with Canada is everyone thinks it's cold the, the whole time and it, it really isn't. It gets really nice and warm and hot and you'll get a nice tan in, in the summer. So, you know, it's a good time to go. We've got stuff like, you know, Canada Days on the 1st of July, which is a really good time to be there. They have like what they call patio season. So, um, you know, summer's... It's, it, it's, they really embrace it and, and then there's lots of outside dining. Um, lots of festivals and concerts. So yeah, I mean, I think, you know, most of your clients will be, you know, realistically looking to go sort of June, June, September time. And then, you know, one thing I think that people don't associate Canada with, with the four colours, you know, we have beautiful four colours, particularly on the East Coast, you know, in the Maritime provinces, 
um, and Ontario and Quebec. Um, and then on the West Coast, you know, the bears, you get those iconic images of the bears like scooping the salmon out of the rivers as well. And then we've got sort of world-class festivals like TIFF, which is the Toronto International Film Festival. So yeah, so there's plenty to go out in autumn. Um, and then, you know, winter is something that um, Canada does really well in terms of actually the experience you'll have. We've obviously got, you know, world-class ski resorts like, you know, Whistler and Banff, like Louise. We've got some of the best heli skiing in the world. Um, but then we've got, you know, you can go and have a winter wonderland experience, which I've done, it, which is absolutely fab, where you get to do dog sledding and snowmobiling. Um, you know, they've got these festivals like Winterlude in Ottawa and the Quebec Winter Festival. Um, it, we, there's a nice hotel in Quebec as well. Um, and if you're up in Quebec, February to April, you know, you, you get to see the sort of, you can go to a sugar shack, which is great fun and see how they, they sort of tap the maple syrup. So I've got a little video on winter, which we'll play now. Great, thank you very much. Now I know we've we've covered a quite a bit of quite a few activities that, that take place in the great outdoors. Um, but I know you said that most clients are going to be wanting that great outdoors after enduring so many lockdowns and the pandemic. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the country's adventure tourism offerings? Yeah, I mean, again, there's plenty to go at, and, and it's it's it can be you know I think realistically most of our clients the, the clients will want to do you know is is soft adventure. You know, I think with Canada, you've got to get in a canoe or a kayak. It's this, this iconic um, part of Canada and, you know, how Canada opened up. So, you know, you can either just rent one, you know, somewhere like Lake Louise or, or you know, all over the country. Or, you know, if you don't feel like doing it yourself, there's, there's opportunities to be paddled in. You know, sometimes I've been in one of these big Voyager canoes, which is what they originally used um, indigenous people for, for trading and, and stuff and so yeah you definitely got to get on the water you know I mean I, I love biking and I think more people like biking and there's plenty of options for biking all over Canada it's in the cities as well you know cycling around Stanley Park if you don't feel up to it you know e-bikes are, are big in Canada you can get an e-bike where you know the, the battery takes the strain I think you know the hiking is, is great and again it doesn't have to be huge hikes you know you can just go and do a little walk around one of the lakes um so yeah th those th there's, there's huge opportunities there um you know we've got you know really good white water rafting um there, there seems to be a zip line everywhere you go in canada now so again if, um and some really long ones as well like particularly in whistler um that's something that's that's worth doing so i think you know there's a chance to sort of have some new adventures in a safe environment, um, you know, and, and, and it's, it's another way to get out in, in the, the beautiful nature. Yeah, plenty for thrill seekers. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. And now, am I right in thinking there's a growing trend for Indigenous tourism? Um, and, and if so, can you tell us a little bit, bit about that and what kind of culture that visitors can experience in Canada? Yeah, well, obviously, I mean, again, this was something I didn't know before I got this job, but you know, Canada has a really rich indigenous um, sort of culture, which is, 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 is a real mix across the country. And, and you know, it's something that, that you know, we, we as Destination Canada trying to bring to the fore in terms of letting people know about it. And, you know, there's quite a lot of work being done in terms of um, helping indigenous tourism experiences become, you know, international market ready. So, I mean, I think the best way is just to talk about a few of them because I think that there's some amazing experiences there. I mean, one of the best ones I've done is, is, is quite near Calgary in Alberta. It's called, it's got a great name. It's called Head Smashed in Buffalo Jump. And, and essentially it's um, a museum that where there used to be one of these jumps where basically what they did was to hunt the buffalo. They, they used to drive them over a cliff um, and it's a really interactive experience and, and it's fascinating um and, and and you know but but i think you know down to the point where you know if you go to somewhere like spirit bear lodge which is one of the bear lodges 
um, you know, you, you have the indigenous guides, which, you know, they just have that sort of deeper understanding of the land and appreciation and you, you get that sort of deeper experience. So, but, you know, there's, there's indigenous tourism experiences across the country. You know, there's Wendaki in, in Quebec, which is a, a traditional Huron uh, site. And uh, I've done the indigenous experience in Ottawa, where you get to see sort of um, the dancing and, and some, um, uh, you actually get to have a go at the dancing as well, which I was very bad at, but yeah. But it, you know, it, it, that, that really adds to it, the trip to Canada. And I, I'd encourage um, you to, to seek out those experiences for your clients. And if they're there on the 21st of June, that's National Indigenous Peoples Day. So there's plenty of going on all over the country. So yeah, it, it's definitely, um, I think, something that, will, um, that, that clients should do for sure. Okay, interesting. Now, before we move on to the sales and marketing tips, um, are there any other destination highlights that agents should have on their radar at the moment? Yeah, well, I mean, I think I've, I've touched on it, but I mean, the wildlife is a really big one. And, and I, I would argue like in the West Coast, you, you can actually sell a, a almost like a, it's like an African safari because you, you can see bears and whales and but the bird life is, is phenomenal. So I, I think that is a, a real, um, a real sort of draw, draw card for Canada. I think the other thing just, you know, um, it, it, it can be challenging if you, if you don't know Canada at all. And, and all, when I say to people that haven't been and don't know it so well, it, it's best to sort of break it down. You know, I think, you know, when you're looking for your clients for the first trip, you're, you're looking at sort of Alberta and BC, arguably, or Ontario or Ontario, Quebec. Um, and, and so if you don't know so much, you know, you know maybe focus your learning on, on, on those those provinces first to get your first few trips under your belt and then you know clients that come in you know they might want to go to the Maritimes or Yukon or the prairies and then you can kind of expand your knowledge but it, it it's um you know it's it's relatively easy to to to, to sell Canada um but yeah do, do, you don't want to get overawed by the size of the country because um it although it's big it's it's very doable for you know like a two-week trip uh, for, for most most clients so I've got I've got a little video to hopefully inspire you here now So what marketing advice would you give to agents that are selling or looking to sell Canada next year in 2022? Well, I, I'd use our assets. We've got a great brand Canada library, which has got images. It's got videos as well. And some of these videos we're showing now you, you can get access to. Um, so I definitely um, will put a link at the bottom. It's brandcanadalibrary.ca. Um, and then also just jump on our social channels. We're very active on social media. So Again, there's lots of content that there that you can use and share away with your audience. So that would probably be my, my best advice. Okay, great. And do you have any like tech tips, selling tips for agents that could help them boost their Canada sales? Well, I think it's probably quite simple, really. But I mean, and you, you might be, well be doing this, but, but, you know, work with a specialist tour operator partner. I think, you know, again... I think Canada can be daunting if you're not been and you might feel like you want to sell somewhere easier, you know, but you know, let the tour operators take the strain, you know, they'll make you look good. You know, they, they, they really know it, the specialists. So, you know, people like first class holidays, Canadian affair, prestige, you know, premier holidays, even all you travel now working with agents, you know, they have the real specialists that really know it. So you don't actually need to know it. You know, they, you, you, you know, they can really help you and, 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 Get, get it over the line so I mean that would be my, my best recommendation really. Okay and is Destination Canada offering agents any new training opportunities apart from this webinar <laughs> or fam trips competitions booking incentives that kind of thing? Yeah we are actually we've got quite a lot coming up and it's part of the reason for doing this webinar really so we have got a new online training program which is being launched in November um, so um, do look out for that um, I'd really encourage you to go on our TTG Canada Hub, which um, this video will sit on. And there's, there's more info on there. And we've 
basically brought together some of our team Canada partners who are going to be producing videos. So there'll be new content on that throughout the year. And we've got the likes of Via Rail and Alberta and Rocky Mountaineer coming on there, British Columbia to do to do an update. So, so do um, look out for that. And then we've got an event as well, um, which we're launching the Canada Specialist Programme on the 23rd of November called Canada Connect. And that's going to be a fun event. There's going to be quite a lot of prizes. We've got some really nice cookbooks actually that we're giving away to the first 50 people that do the Canada Specialist Programme. So yeah, definitely um, look out on the hub. I think the hub's best place to start at. Um, we'll, there'll be details when the, the specialist program's live and also uh, about the event. Um, and then once you take the specialist program, then next year there'll be opportunities for fam trips and further sort of training experiences. So yeah, we, we do really encourage everyone. We, we've had one of the longest programs, I think, out there in terms of um, a training program. So it's gonna be new, it's, it's looking really good actually. So it's it's an app so it's something that you can use um in your own time you know short modules sort of mainly with video and and content so we'd really encourage you to take it and then once you become a specialist we we can then start that relationship with you and support you more wow it's great to hear you doing so much it's brilliant now before we wrap up um is there anything else that agents should know about selling canada right now anything else you want to flag to our viewers well i, ju I mean i just say I think we have a real advantage. We are open. I mean, if you look at where you can go currently long haul, there's not that many places. So Canada's open. It's, it's ready to welcome your clients. So, you know, all those clients that maybe rebooked and rebooked to go somewhere else, you know, maybe think about getting to Canada, you know, um, it's still a great time to go now until, you know, right into October. And then, you know, if clients want to go and have that winter experience, that's an opportunity as well. So, yeah it's it's open it's what is waiting for, for clients we're, we're looking forward to welcoming you all brilliant thank you very much adam and thanks for joining today and sharing your insight it's been really interesting to hear all about canada and all the latest um it's a fantastic destination and i know the agent clients will all love it if they're visiting for the first time <laughs> thanks maddie it's been a pleasure um yeah great and thank you to everyone who's tuned in to watch um, you can find more Canada content, as Adam said, on the Destination Canada Hub on teachingmedia.com. So please do check in there for more educational stuff. Um, and thank you very much again. Take care. Cheers. Goodbye. <laughs>